The special session of the Independent School District Number 535 School Board is called to order 6 p.m. on Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019, in room 137 of the Edison Building. Present at the board table is Mr. Michael Munoz, Superintendent of Schools, and a non-voting ex-official member of the board. Also present is Ms. Wendy Edgar, the Assistant Board Clerk. Ms. Edgar, would you please call the roll? Ms. Amundsen? Here. Chair Barlow? Here. <clears throat> Ms. Marvin? Here. Ms. Nathan? Here. Mr. Susner? Ms. Seelinger? Here. Ms. Workman? Here. Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Two point zero one approval of agenda. This is an action item, Mr. Munoz. There are no changes. Move approval. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Seven point zero one approval of school district property taxes payable in twenty twenty. Mr. Munoz. Yes. At this time, I'm going to call John Carlson, Executive Director of Finance, to brief us on this agenda item. Good evening, Chair Barlow, Superintendent Munoz, members of the board here tonight to do our annual truth in taxation or also known as the property tax hearing. So what I want to cover tonight uh, that's required to do uh, before we set the levy next week is we need to talk about the previous year and how that went with our budget as well as the current year budget. We need to talk about the proposed property taxes and then we'll allow time for public comments at the very end. So the school district property tax cycle is just a little bit different from city and county. So in December, we all of the governmental entities certify our property tax levy. Uh, they are for taxes payable in the calendar year of 2020, but this is revenue for our budget in the 2020-2021 school year. And for the city and county, it's for their 2020 budget. So here's the data on our final uh, results from last year. We have not officially presented this to the board yet, so this is the first time you've seen this. We are presenting the audited results to you formally next uh, Tuesday by our auditor. Um, but it came in at $338.9 million in total revenues and $320.4 million in total expenditures. We had $94.6 million in fund balance at the end of the year, so that's kind of like a savings account. I just point out that on the construction fund, there was $19.3 million of unspent construction money. That's primarily because the Bamber Valley project remodeling this summer was only about a third of the way complete at June 30th. So the money that we were using for that um, was only about a third of the way spent. Um, and our general fund has $37.4 million um, in it. So the original budget that you approved um, back in June for the current school year that we're in, because we do not have a budget yet for the next school year, so we'll talk about this current year budget. Um, we started at 305.1 million in revenues, total revenues, and 307.3 million in total expenditures. Again, our general fund is our largest fund where we do our day-to-day -day spending. Um, the other funds are segregated by law for different activities that we need to report separately. Uh, we will also ask the board to approve a revised budget um, next Tuesday, but this is the original budget that we started with. So money for the property taxes go into three different buckets. There's the general fund, that's our day-to-day -day, um, spending, so that can go towards education, like paying teachers, paraprofessionals. It can go to student support services, like social workers, things like that. It also covers some operations and maintenance, transportation. These are just examples, but not fully inclusive. Um, so it's kind of the day-to-day -day spending to run the school district. Then there's the community service fund. Um, part of our levy goes to pay for community education programs, school readiness programs, adult basic education. And then finally, we have the debt service fund. So uh, the voter approved um, bonds that were just passed, we would put the money that were collected into the debt service fund and those would be used to pay the principal and interest payments as they come due on the bonds. 
So this is what the levy is looking like. Uh, last year it was $56 million, and, and a rounded off number there, but $56 million. Next year it would go to just under $66 million. I've rounded up uh, for this, and that's an increase of $9.9 million. Uh, the reason for the large increase, again, is because of the voter-approved referendum that passed on November 5th. We will collect uh, the money into the debt service fund. Had that not passed, you can see the levy would have actually gone down year over year. So we would have a decline in the levy from 19 to 20. Again, that was planned. We had planned to strategically do that because Century and Riverside were being paid off. So this was a good time uh, to run the referendum. So here's the major factors impacting property taxes. Uh, three main things kind of make up the, the large change. Again, $9.6 million is for principal and interest that we need to collect for the first year of the bond payments on the new school buildings. We will have increasing student counts, so part of the levy um, goes up when there's more students. It doesn't go up just because house values goes up, it goes up because there's new students, and so we levy a per student amount, and with more students then there's more money collected. And then there's some decreases in some other small programs of about $300,000. So how this breaks down and how it impacts uh, homeowners, uh, hopefully you can see this chart, but on a $200,000 home, so that's the second uh, bars in there, the blue and the orange, the blue was last year, a $200,000 homeowner would have paid $722 of taxes uh, towards the school district. Now next year it'll be 769, so that fully works in the amount of the uh, referendum that just passed. So that'll be about a 47 to $48 per year increase as we uh, communicated over and over during the referendum. Uh, if you have a business that's worth $1 million, uh, it would be uh, going up from $5,200 per year to about $5,900 per year. And if you have a farmland, this is kind of showing the value per acre. So if the value of land uh, for your farm was about $8,000 an acre, that's the third set of bars over, it'd be about $5.32 up to $5.57. And this is just the history of uh, a 10-year look of what the property tax levy has done on the school portion only. So back in 2010, it was about $614 per year on a $200,000 home. Now um, it's at $769. Uh, it did go up there for a while, and then now it's been coming back down again. And that's, again, because we've been paying off some of the debt, as well as the property tax base has expanded. And if the levy isn't going up as much as the property tax base is expanding, the tax and value is actually going down on an individual home basis. And that's what we see there. And then we've started comparing recently to other districts just to get a sense of where do we rank locally. So uh, these are 2019 numbers, so these don't reflect our referendum passing, but they would also not reflect the Stuartville referendum passing or the uh, Zambroda Mazeppa referendum passing. But you can see um, if you lived in Goodhue, which is the district just to the north of us, you would pay about $1,159 per year to the uh, school district for a $200,000 home, and we're near the bottom at $722. Only Plainview, Elgin, Millview is less expensive um, than us in the local area. And then just like to look at how does this compare against a couple of the city's districts that are about the same size as us, and again, we're at the bottom of that list last year. Uh, South Washington County is like the Woodbury area, so that's 1330 if you had a $200,000 home there versus 722 in Rochester. And that's all I had um, prepared for a formal presentation. Uh, I can take questions from the school board, and then I would let the public speak. Director Workman. Yes, John, on slide 12 with the property tax history. So um, in 2010, I see that number is $614. Is that in 2010 dollars, or has that been adjusted for inflation? Correct. Those are 2014 dollars. So we have not done any uh, 2010 dollars. So we've okay. not done any okay. adjustments. Okay. Just literally what it was back okay. then. Director Nathan. So will the you said the bond payment um, this year about 9.6 million? Will that be consistent year to year, or does that fluctuate? So we've planned, um, we, we haven't issued the bonds yet, so we'll know a little bit more once we do that in early January. But what we're proposing and what our financial advisor is recommending is that we keep that payment level or steady for the first five years, and then we'll have it drop down a little bit after that. 
So it, it won't be like going up. If, if anything, it's going to be going down over time. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Questions from other board members? I do have one more. Director Workman. So, um, piggybacking on Director Nathan's question, then, so um, depending in, uh, in terms of what happens with the tax base over those next five years, then even though we're keeping it level, it's possible that they would could see a decrease yes, in that's, their taxes. Yes, that's, that's absolutely and, true. Unless the property assessor knocks on the door and says, hey, guess what, your property is worth a whole lot more, which, yeah. of course, we have no control over. Correct, and that's all contingent to upon how much new construction is in the market. New construction is always good because that helps spread the tax, tax over yeah. uh, more houses and businesses. Other questions? Well, we'd like to give the uh, community, the public, an opportunity to um, ask questions. Don't go too far, um, John. Uh, these are the guidelines for speaking to the board. Okay. Uh, if you'd state your name and home address and limit your comments to three to five minutes. So we'd like to invite the public, if anyone is here, to comment regarding um, the property tax payable in 2020. We invite you to come forward now. Mr. Carlson, it seems like they just came to hear your presentation and uh, <laughs> okay. I saw fingers. I'm sorry. Yes, please come. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, please, please come forward. It's uh, recorded, so we'd like to. Yes, yep. that's fine. Thank you. Dorothea if you Case. could state your name and address, please. Thank sure, you. Dorothea Case, uh, 604 Street Southwest, number 505. Um, my question is, I noticed that the the data that you presented based numbers on a two hundred thousand dollar home. Is there a reason we chose two hundred thousand? And how many? How representative is that of the average home in Rochester or the other cities? Yeah, I can address that. Uh, when we were doing the referendum work, the median price for a home is one hundred sixty-three thousand four hundred, I do believe, in Rochester. So we just kind of round up to two hundred because it's easier to say two hundred thousand and use those numbers versus one hundred sixty. 3,400, okay. so, right. yeah. That just surprises me because I, I you need people who scramble to get a house if they can find one for 200,000 because of the market. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, and uh, we'll continue to take comments from the public and then circle back around for the board, okay? Are there any other members of the public who would like to comment? Uh, Director Workman. I, I would just like to... Um, for the um, lady who addressed the board to um, tell you that it's based on the $200,000 property tax evaluation or valuation. So if your property tax says your house is worth 200000 it's based on that number, not what you might be able to sell it for. So somebody who's, who lives in a house that is taxed as if it were valued 200000 mm -hmm. might be able to sell it for a whole lot more or perhaps less. Just for clarification. Thank you, Director Workman. 7.03, uh, announcement of levy certification date. The property tax levy for school district property taxes payable in 2020 will be certified by the school board at, at its regular meeting scheduled on December 10th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned at 6.15.